Today, we're going to be using Content Aware Fill to clean up any background in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and today we're going to show you how to use the Content Aware Fill dialog to simply highlight any area you'd like to remove and automatically remove it. So here we are in Photoshop. I really like this image, but we've got a lot of distractions here on the background. Some spray paint, we have some marks on the wall here. This is kind of like inconsistent on the top. So I just kind of want to clean all of this up. Now, if you want to follow along, you can download the sample image totally free. Just follow the link right down below. So what we're going to do, start by creating a new layer. Let's just create a new layer right down here. Click on this little plus mark. And I need to start with a selection. So I'm going to go to my rectangular marquee tool right over here in my toolbox. Let's just choose a rectangular marquee. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of click and drag there on the top of my image. So you can see I've got a selection there on the top. So now that we have a selection, it's okay to be on a new layer. That's what we want. We're going to go to edit and then down here to where it says content aware fill. There we go. Now, we have a content aware fill dialog. All the screen has changed. So let's kind of talk you through this because there's a lot here. Now, here on the left, we have our actual image. And you can see here's our selection on the top with this kind of lighter area that we highlighted. We have our selection active. Over here on the right-hand side, we have our preview. And this, you can see, it's actually done the job. It's completely removed that area on the top. And it looks really, really good. Now, this area here, why is this green right here? You can see all this area is highlighted green. Well, that's actually where it's selecting to pull the information to fill it in that area. So Content Aware Fill is kind of a smart tool. It can analyze around your image, find areas that kind of look similar to where you select, and then it'll sample those and fill it in. So it's using the content, it's aware of the content, and it's filling it in. So where is it pulling the content from? It's from these green areas here. Now, you might be asking, what if it's not exactly right? What if I want to change those green areas? You can use this paintbrush tool on the very top left here. There we go. Let's go ahead and click there. You can either subtract or add. Let's say I don't want to include this area of my subject's head. So I'm going to just paint there. Okay, it's going to subtract that out. And we're going to see it's going to recalculate and give me another result here on this side. Okay, if you want to say don't select this little hinge right there, it's going to minus that out from the selection and then recalculate your result. Now, a couple options that I do recommend working with here. Let's go ahead to our sampling area overlay. Now, this is the overlay here. You can turn this off or on. So if it's getting in your way, you can just turn it off really easy. You can change the color and you can change the opacity. Okay. Now, also right here on your sampling area options, I recommend just keeping this to auto. It tends to work the best. And make sure you have sample all layers checked. This can allow you to do this on a new layer. All right. Now, down here at the bottom, we have our fill settings, color adaptation and rot rotation adaptation. These guys, I recommend just keeping this at their default settings. But if you find that it's not working well, just go ahead and try working through these. They basically will change the different colors and they'll rotate samples. For instance, like if the wood grain doesn't match up, it's going to try to rotate them around. You can also try pressing scale and mirror. Sometimes I find that these do make a difference, but normally just leaving these on default tends to work the best. All right. Now, here on the bottom, you can choose to output this to a new layer if you'd like. In this case, I'm just going to go to a current layer because I already created a new layer. But new layer is a good setting. Uh, just keep in mind for every time you do the content aware fill, it's going to create a new layer. So you might be left with a bunch of layers you need to merge together later. But in this case, let's just go to current layer. Fantastic. Now, here we have our result, and that looks really good. I'm like, yes, okay, fantastic. Now, normally here, uh, you could hit OK, and then you would go back into Photoshop. I'll just show you how to do that. Hit OK, okay, it made the change. Go back into Photoshop, and then you're like, okay, I'll make another selection here. Go to Edit, down to Content Aware Fill again. Bring up the dialog box, here's my thing. Um, <laughs> you can see that can get a little bit repetitive, especially if we want to remove like a a lot of objects, right? So what we can actually do is hit this apply button here. So I'm going to hit this apply right over here on the right hand side. It's going to apply that change to my image. There we go. And now within this dialog box, I can then choose my lasso tool. So I can make selections here with the lasso tool. I can even use a polygonal lasso tool again. So let's go to our lasso tool. This is going to allow me to make some selections. So let's say I'm just going to highlight right around this little hinge right here. Okay. Now that is what's going to get removed. So you can see the little preview here on the right hand side.
So this is incredibly cool. Let's just go ahead and hit apply. And now we're starting to get a workflow to where I can simply just circle anything that I want, hit apply, and it removes it. The only thing that I want to do left with my workflow here is just get rid of this green sample area because I don't really need to see it most of the time. So I'm just going to go where it says it show sampling area. We're going to uncheck that. Okay. Now the fun comes in. Look at this. So literally, uh, by the way, you can hold space bar down, which brings up your hand tool so you can move around your image. So let's go ahead and just circle this little hinge right there. You can see it automatically removed it. There's my little preview and I'm going to hit apply. Okay. Let's move down here, circle that, hit apply. So now I can just simply move to any area that's in my image. Look at this. I can even, I've made a selection of that. If you hold shift, you can add to your selection. So I selected that and selected these. Boom, hit apply and they're completely gone. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. I can just move up there and I'm going to get a little preview every single time that I do this. So if I like the result, cool. If I don't, no big deal. And if I need to redo that, I can simply redo that area. Now here we're running into a little bit of an issue. What's going on? Well, I tried to do the same thing like in basically content aware removal twice in the same area and it's getting a little confused. This is because it's continuing to apply it to the current layer. So if I just change this to a new layer, there we go. It's going to start making new layers in Photoshop, but it's going to do a little bit better of a job here in content aware fill. There we go. So let's go ahead and hit that. We're going to click on apply. And then like literally I can just go through my image, circle anything that I want to remove and hit apply. And it's going to automatically get rid of these objects. This is such a beautiful, clean and easy way to remove so many background distractions. Look how fast I'm working through this. I'm just basically using the lasso tool. There we go. Let's select all that, remove it, hit apply. And it's intelligently pulling the information from around my image to fill these areas in. Let's go ahead and remove that as well. Hit apply. This works really, really well and it's fast. That's what I like about it. That's like, okay, cool. Like <laughs> you can select large areas. Now this uses the same technology as the spot healing brush tool. So if you use the spot healing brush tool, which has content aware built into it, you'll already be familiar with this technology. It's incredibly powerful. Sometimes it doesn't do that great around like the edge of a subject. So that's why I'm kind of like leaving that blank. I'll just use a uh, like a clone stamp tool instead. There we go. So just kind of circling these areas and hitting apply. You can see I'm cleaning up the background really, really fast here. Is there anything else? I think the rest I'm just going to take up with a clone stamp tool. So let's go ahead and hit OK there. And as you can see, it did create a bunch of new layers. So remember earlier we were on current layer and it was producing some issues when we had those hinges here. So that's when I chose new layer as my output. I didn't have to leave the dialog box, but now what I'm left with is all these different layers here. You can see I've got a bunch of layers. That's not really a big deal. What I'm going to do is click on the top Then we're going to scroll all the way down here and hold shift and then click. So I basically shift click to select all those layers. Okay. Then we're going to hit control or command E that's going to merge them all together. So there we go. There's our before and after you can see now it's all on one layer. It just works sometimes a little bit better. If in the tool you select new layer, that way it's going to currently sample like the entire image, produce a new layer. And then the next effect produces a new layer on top of that. That way your changes don't get in the way of each other. They don't interfere. So let's go ahead and finish this up. We're going to create a new layer here. I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool and simply clone stamp. So clone stamp from the outside in, there we go. Make sure on the top, it says sample current and below. There we go. Fantastic clone stamp. Just getting rid of these distractions there. All right. Beautiful. Create a really small brush and paint back that hair. <laughs> I love doing stuff like that. And then check this out. I'm on this layer here. I'm going to go to select and then down here to select subject. There we go. Now my subject is selected. Let me just click on my background layer. So select and then select subject. There we go. Fantastic. So now that my subject is selected, I can go on this layer and I'm going to actually go to select and then inverse my selection. Okay. So now if I want to play with like my clone stamp tool, I don't have to worry about painting over my subject at all. Like if I were to just grab a brush tool, okay, let's just grab a color with my brush tool and start painting. You can see I can't paint on my subject at all, right? So if any areas do come really close to your subject, no big deal. You can use select subject. 
There we go. And then I just inverted that select subject. So now I'm just sampling from around my image and it's gonna paint right to the border of my subject without actually affecting the subject. All right, now obviously I'm doing this relatively quickly because uh, we're in a tutorial, but the more time and energy you spend here, the better your results are going to be. You can hit Control or Command H to hide that selection, which can be really helpful so you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit better. I think this looks fantastic. Now we can see, wow, it's got a really good job. Now in this case, uh, we've got a little bit of just a color issue here. So you can create a new layer. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool and hold Alt or Option to sample this color and then simply just paint over here. My selection's still active. And I can just change this layer from normal down here. I'm gonna go all the way down to where it says color, okay? So we can see we had a little bit of a green color left over from the background here, but this new layer just painted from this color over there. Let's change it back to normal blend mode so you can see what it is. Okay, it's just a brush stroke with this color here. But when you change it from normal down to color blend mode, it simply cleans up that color. Another quick tip you can do, if you wanna create a new layer, I love this, going to the regular healing brush tool. Let's go to the regular healing brush tool. Let's say there's like a little bit of uh, um, like texture that you don't want. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option here to sample this texture, okay? And then paint over here and it's gonna remove that texture right there. Or maybe like this area, you don't think there's enough texture. So you can actually hold Alt or Option and click on a texture area and then start painting it in. And it's going to add that texture back to that area. So you can use this healing brush tool to add or remove texture. And that's gonna help all your effects look a lot more realistic, especially um, if some of these automatic tools don't work as well. Let me just sample this texture up there. We'll try painting that in. I think that's gonna work a little bit better. There we go. How cool is that? Like literally just put that texture right on there because I sampled this texture with the regular healing brush tool holding Alt or Option and then painted it in right there and we are good to go. Wow, this looks really cool. Now, if you wanna do like, let's say you thought, thought this was a little bit too dark, check this out. I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm on a new layer, all right? We're gonna sim sample this background here and paint over there. But now I'm gonna change my blend mode from normal. We're gonna to go to lighten, okay? So it's only gonna lighten some areas. There we go. And now this is gonna help me kind of like uh, make my image just a lot more uniform in terms of light and dark. So if some areas are just a little too dark, like this is here a little bit too dark maybe, boom, just grab your clone stamp tool, paint over just a little bit and just do lighten as your blend mode. And what that's gonna do is just gonna kind of fill in those dark patches it's gonna make your background just a little bit more uniform. There we go. And you can see it makes a big difference, but it still retains the texture of the original area. It's just lightening up those dark patches. So this is a fantastic way to kind of make these backgrounds just a little bit uh, more uniform. So let's just turn that off and on. You can see, there we go. That's the result of the lighten. Boom, this is looking so good. Now don't forget, you guys can download this PSD. Let's take a look at our before and our after. Let's hit F for full screen. Here is our before and our after. That looks so awesome. And you can see the detail here looks fantastic. There's a before and the after. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give us a big like if you enjoyed this episode and let me know in a comment right down below what you'd like to learn. All these things do help the channel out with that YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.